Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, and today I'm going to talk about ferrite saturation. Uh, in particular, people had a lot of questions about what I did to modify ferrite so that they could be attached to the service entrance wires to your house without saturating due to the high currents, right? So let's talk about what saturation is and then how you get past it, all right? So this picture shows a uh, current going through a wire and then a ferrite around the wire. And the idea is as the current goes to the wire, it develops a magnetic field that circles around the wire and that magnetic flux is sort of collected inside of the ferrite there, okay? And based on the material, it collects it in different ways, all right? So that's the idea of what a ferrite is. Now, what is, how does it work? Well, the, the, the way it works is if the current tries to change, it has to change that magnetic field that's been built up. And, and there's always some delay, some uh, resistance to doing that, okay? And so this ferrite essentially acts as kind of like a dampener to any sudden changes of current on the incoming line. And that's what you want it to do to suppress those transients. Now, that current that comes through here is related to the magnetic field that's developed. And it's the magnetic field is proportional to the current. I won't write out the whole formula, but just know that they're proportional to each other. If current goes up, magnetic field goes up, all right? All right, so if you look up for any given ferrite, you'll find a, a BH curve where H is the magnetic field that's developed uh, from some currents. And B is the magnetic flux density, essentially how many magnetic flux lines there are through a given area. And so if you look at this curve, it sort of looks like an S. And, and what it shows is that as the current goes up, and of course, that's the same proportional to the magnetic field. As it increases, so does the magnetic flux density, but only to a certain point. At a certain point, it starts to increase less and less. And eventually, it doesn't increase at all anymore, even though you're putting more and more current. And this region up here where you're no longer getting the change in the magnetic flux density that you once were, that's the region of saturation, all right? If you extract the ratio of B to H, you'll come up with something called the permeability. They use the letter mu to denote that. And if you just take each of those points and you plot it, it'll look kind of like a little mountain. And what it shows is that this region here where you have sort of the highest slope is where you end up with the most permeability. And that's the region that you'd like to operate it in to get the optimal performance out of your ferrite. If you run it over in this region of saturation over here, you end up way down here and you end up getting very poor performance from your ferrite, maybe no benefit at all, all right? And by performance, we're talking about the ability to suppress those transients, okay? So we have to stay away from regions where the current's too high or we'll end up way down here on the permeability curve, all right? Now, there's a little circuit model that people often use. They can calculate something called the reluctance of the ferrite, and it's really just proportional to one over the mu, all right? But it's sort of another way of saying the same thing. You want very high mu to get a very small reluctance, and it's sort of uh, similar to the idea of resistance with electrical current. This is just with magnetic, all right? So this is the idea of saturation. If you push too much current in through the ferrite, you're gonna end up in a region where you have very little permeability, and that means you have very little performance of the ferrite, okay? So next, let's talk about what you do to get past that. Okay, so we talked about what saturation is. Now let's talk about how to avoid it. All right, so magnetic engineers have understood for a long time that if you introduce a non-ferrous gap into the, into the ferrite, you can affect its performance. Basically, if you go and cut a small slot of the ferrous material out and introduce something that's not ferrous, such as maybe air, for example, or aluminum or something like that, and what happens is you greatly affect the BH curve of the ferrite. So the blue one here shows the original curve, and normally we'd try and operate here to sort of stay well away from saturation. And then by, by introducing that small gap, a very carefully controlled distance gap, you can lay the curve over and spread out that linear region. And that's really nice because now it lets you operate at a much higher current. And that's really the goal of this, is to try and operate at a much higher current without being up in the saturation region here, okay? What that does to the permeability curve is the original permeability curve looked like the blue one here. It's, it's narrow, it's high peaked. By introducing the gap, it moves the permeability curve out uh, quite a bit further in current, and it also spreads it out, which gives you a nice uh, operating region in which to run. Now, the expense of it, of course, is you notice that the peak permeability has dropped, which means the performance of the ferrite is not quite as good as it was. It's a trade. You're giving up being able to take in more current at the expense of essentially the permeability, the effectiveness of the ferrite. You're, you're trading off the two. If you pick too much current that you want to go through it, this, this curve moves way out and the level drops so low that the ferrite is not effective. On the other hand, if you don't pick enough current as your operating point and you introduce a teeny, teeny, tiny gap, it scoots it back here and it's almost back to what it was before. And again, you have the problem of being out, with, being out too far on the current curve and you saturate. So it's a trade of how much gap do you introduce, okay? So this shows the idea of what I did to uh, the high current saturation ferrites, all right? And the idea behind that is 
uh, introduce a very small gap and if you if you design it just right, you do the calculations just right, and you can figure out a way to implement that gap, you can end up getting this kind of a permeability curve, which lets you operate at much higher currents, all right? And that's the idea of the ferrites that I'm selling is they're introduced with a, a non-ferrous gap that's carefully controlled and, and precisely calculated to get you in the right operating region, okay? I hope that all makes sense. Um, if for some reason it doesn't make sense or you just have additional questions, feel free to go ahead and write me, uh, either post a comment or just send me an email and I'll do my best to try and answer.